A pilot scheme planned for Northern Ireland which would selectively cull badgers testing positive for tuberculosis could spread the disease even further, according to a scientist who's been working on the disease for the last two decades. A programme of general vaccination in badgers, which has just started, will continue for a year, then live badgers will be tested, the healthy ones will be vaccinated and the infected ones culled. In a paper assessing the impact of the project, Professor Rosie Woodruff at the Institute of Zoology says even culling a small number of badgers could spread the disease further. What the model suggests is that this test, vaccinate, remove approach is expected to be effective only if culling these small numbers of badgers, just the test positive ones that you can catch, doesn't change the behaviour of those that are left behind. But if badgers do start to range more widely and interact to a greater extent as a consequence of small-scale culling, then this approach is predicted to increase cattle TB risks. And that happens because you can't catch all the badgers. The testing will only detect about half of the infected badgers that you catch. And of course, because you can't catch all the badgers, you also can't vaccinate all of the survivors and the vaccine is perfectly protective. And all of these factors add up. So basically you're saying even if you're testing and vaccinating and removing a smaller number of badgers, there will be what's known as perturbation. That's right. So at the time that these models were done, they didn't know which of those scenarios was more likely. So we were able to look back in time. We used actually old data from small scale culling of badgers, which happened between 1986 and 1998. We were able to find areas where there'd been culls of one or two or three or four or five badgers. But the thing is, someone would say, well, hang on a minute, you're just pulling up old data from 96 to 98. What actual evidence do you have? Because the trial in Northern Ireland is only just beginning and there'll be no culling till next year. We're only saying that it's risky. So what we did was we, we, you know, we had these former small-scale culls that had occurred previously prior to the randomised badger culling trial. And then at the start of the randomised badger culling trial, we had a snapshot of the badger population. Where there had been this prior culling, we saw larger territories, a higher proportion of immigrant badgers, lower degree of relatedness between members of the same social group, and also a higher proportion of infected badgers. We were able to look for evidence of a threshold and to say, OK, if you just kill one badger, do you see a change? If you kill two badgers, three badgers and so on, and try to work out where there might be a tipping point to see if you cull few enough badgers, do you avoid these perturbation effects? And unfortunately, we were not able to find any tipping point. So it suggests that the perturbation starts sort of more or less when you kill the first badger. The badgers live in groups. Their social group will be disturbed by things like roadkill as well, won't they? Yeah, absolutely, and that, that's certainly right. Probably some social groups of badgers are perturbed by road kills. We actually looked for evidence that having high densities of roads in an area was associated with perturbation. We didn't find that there was evidence of perturbation where there were a lot of roads. But we also worked out that the numbers of badgers that would be being, on average killed in road accidents was much lower than the number that would be killed due to culling were that to go ahead. Professor Rosie Woodroff. We asked Northern Ireland's Department for Agriculture and Rural Development for an interview. Nobody was available, but they sent us a statement. Lucy Bickerton is here. Uh, Lucy, just tell us what the main points are. Well, the department says the paper is based on data from England from between 1998 and 2006, and so therefore this may not translate to the situation in Northern Ireland. They also say reports from the Republic of Ireland's badger culling policy suggest that the perturbation effect hasn't been a problem there. And as for the design of the test, vaccinate or remove trial, the first year of testing and vaccination is meant to build up some immunity to bovine TB in the badger population and therefore to protect against any effect of social groups being broken up. Some badgers will also be fitted with GPS collars to gain more evidence about badger movements before any culling takes place. And the Agriculture Department says more evidence on when and how badger perturbation happens is needed, which is why the trial is essential. Thank you, Lucy. And that's all from us today. I'm Anna Hill. The producer in Bristol was Emma Campbell.